Today, my goal for this video is to teach you the most simplistic way and easiest way to view how to find the t or x intercepts of a particular function. All right, let's take a look. So we're given this function, c of t is equal to three multiplied by t plus two multiplied by t minus three multiplied by t plus five. And it's asking me to find the t intercepts, okay? So first of all, what does that even mean? Well, just think about this for a second. Here's your graph, okay? And I'm just gonna draw a little squiggly line on here. I do not pretend that uh, this function will look like this at all necessarily. I just drawing a random line that came to my mind. So what does it mean to be a, in this problem, t intercept or aka x intercept? Well, the t uh, coordinate is plotted on the horizontal axis and the y, or in this particular case, the c of t, is the value is plotted on the vertical axis. The t-intercepts are going to be now the locations here on this graph that cross the t-axis, okay? Or that touch, or that intersect, or that intercept, okay? I guess, right? The t-axis. Now, it turns out that we know three things. Oh, excuse me. It turns out we have three points, but we know one thing. But we know one thing. Okay, I got distracted, sorry. Uh, we know one thing. Uh, that's very unique about these three points, that these three points have in common, actually. Do you know what it is? Well, it turns out that, what was that? Right, you got it, exactly. That the y value, okay, or the c of t value in this problem is all zero for each of them. In other words, the x value or the t value, I don't know what it is, but I know for a fact that the y value or the c of t value is going to be zero, okay? That I know for each point. And that's always gonna be true. Anytime you're finding the x or the t intercept or whatever the case is, okay? Uh, what you want to do is you wanna consider that you're gonna find those values when the function's value or when the y value, or in this particular case, when the c of t value is equal to zero, okay? Gotta keep that in mind. Now, with that knowledge, let's go back to the function, okay? In other words, what we gotta do is this, is this term here has to be zero. Okay, so watch, I'm gonna rewrite this. Zero is equal to three, multiplied by t plus two, multiplied by t minus three, multiplied by t plus five, okay? So somehow what I gotta do is figure out how in the world is this right-hand side going to equal zero? How does that happen? Well, it can happen in one of three possible ways. If this term inside of this parenthesis, this t plus two, if this term is zero somehow, right? If only this term could be zero, how could it be zero? Well, we'll get to that in a second, but only if this, if this term could be zero, I could care less what everything else is, by the way. This could be three, well, it is three, right? This could be five million, this could be 2,987,000, whatever, it doesn't matter. But as long as you have zero in there somewhere, and all of these terms are multiplied together, which they are, then the whole bad boy is going to zero, right? The whole thing's going to zero. So, that's one condition, in which case we'll make the right-hand side go to zero. What's another condition? Well, what about if this thing goes to zero? Well, if this thing goes to zero, the same case. I could care less what the other terms are, who cares? All I know is that zero times anything is gonna be zero and that's gonna equal zero and therefore, oh, wait a minute. If that's when the function equals zero, whatever that t value is will be my value that makes the function zero, right? And what's the last case? Same exact reasoning over here, right? If that term goes to zero for the same, same exact thing, okay? Now, let me just ask this question. What is the t value inside of this parenthesis have to be for this term to go to zero? Think about it carefully. What number plus two is zero? Right, t has to be a minus two. Think about it now. What does t have to be in that equation for that term to go to zero? And in, in equation, I meant term. Right, t has to be a three. And how about here? What does t have to be in the last term in order for that whole term to go to zero? Right, t has to be a negative five. And guess what you did? You solved the, you solved the problem. These are the values. These are the t values where the function's value is zero now, and that's gonna be the locations of those points. All right, now I here I, I have two negative numbers. Like I said, this function I, draw, I drew was just totally random. 
So what I probably, what I should, you know, the function would come over here somewhere and then go back up. But that doesn't matter, okay? That does not matter. But that's how you do it. Okay, now you might say, oh, that's fine and dandy, but you know, my professor, I don't know if he's going to like that or she's going to like that. You know, he didn't show a lot of work. Yeah, I know. But wouldn't you rather think about it and understand what's happening first? Now I'll show you how to do it algebraically. Actually, I mean, I already did. But now you just got to write some scribble down on the paper to satisfy the teachers, right? So all you have to do here, and I'm not downplaying, by the way. It's very important. But what I'm saying is, I think there's too much emphasis usually placed on, oh, show me the work. I'd rather somebody tell me how it's done. Tell me how you did it. Explain it to me. I don't want somebody who follows procedures. I want somebody who thinks, right? So how do we do this now procedurally or AKA algebraically? What we're going to do now is we're going to, we just have to take this and state it now mathematically. In other words, we were saying, if only this term could be equal to zero, how do we state that? Well, t plus 2 somehow has to equal 0. How about the second one? Well, if only t minus 3 is equal to 0, right? If this whole term was equal to 0, then it would go to 0. And the same thing about the last one, right? Somehow t plus 5 has to equal 0. So this is the algebra. Now solve this equation for t. Solve it for t. Minus the 2 on both sides. And guess what? If t were only negative 2, what this is telling you, if t was negative 2, then this whole term would go to 0. And that's already what we said right? But this is just now putting some work down on the paper. Add the 3 on both sides, okay? And then t has to equal positive 3. And that's already what we said. And then minus the 5 on both sides, and t has about now be equal to negative 5. And look at this, lo and behold, isn't this beautiful? This is already what we did, logically. It's so nice, right? It's so easy. Now, how do you check yourself? Well, I mean, do you really need to? I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? But you can always use the calculator. Go to the calculator. Go to your graphing calculator. Great calculator, by the way. If you don't have one, check a link in the uh, description uh, below. Uh, just plug it in. So we're going to do three open parentheses. Okay, t plus two. Now, in this case, I'm going to be using x's because the uh, t doesn't, the calculator doesn't recognize the t. So close the parentheses, open the parentheses, do x minus three. X minus three. Just make sure you're plugging it in correctly and then open the parentheses again, and then do x plus 5. Okay, for a graph, I'm just going to double check, plus 2, minus 3, great. Okay, cool. Now hit graph. Here's your graph. Now, I know that looks a little strange, right? But the idea is this, that, you know, the graph over here, it's going down this way, then it's going to come up, turn around, turn around someplace over there, and then go up, okay? As you can see, I am, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to my handwriting there, but I just kind of trailed off. In any case, um, what I notice here is the following, that these are the three locations where it crosses the x-axis. And what's the location of this coordinate? Well, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Oh my goodness, it crosses the x or the uh, t-axis at negative 5. That's what we said it should do. Great. Now do the next one. But don't get rid of the picture. Sorry. There we go right? Negative two now. That's already what we said it was. Cool. And then how about this? Look, three. That's what we said, right? Look at all those values. That's what we said it was going to be. Now, if you still don't trust the graph, if you're like, well, I want to see it exactly, use your table. Hit second table, okay? Also, if your table doesn't look kind of like this, just go to second table set. You can start the table at zero. Just start it at zero and then increment it by one unit. So it should just be a one. Hit enter and now go to second table or second graph again. Now watch. Let's get everything in the screen, okay? So look, look what your table reads out now. Your table reads out. Now remember, we defined the x-intercepts, or in this problem, the t-intercepts, as locations when, as locations of t, or values of t, or in this case, values of x, because I couldn't plug t into the calculator, but where the y-value of the function value is going to be 0. So look, negative 5, negative 2, and 3. Negative 5 negative two, three. Voila. Voila. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I'm just going to back out of this so you can see some of the work. I really do appreciate it. All right. If you can like subscribe, it really helps us out tremendously. And even better yet, if you wanted to tell some of your classmates or friends that might be taking, uh, you know, math along with you, we'd so appreciate it. And by the way, we don't just have math out there. We have physics we have chemistry, and we have a lot, a lot of other stuff coming out. We really want to help you 
along in almost virtually every subject that we can, all right? We're really trying to help. We want to make your life a lot easier. We want to make it less stressful. We want to give you a guide to follow. But not only, you know, we, we don't want to show you what to think. We want to teach you how to think, all right? And that's what we have a whole channel dedicated to do. So check it out. Thanks again.